as Jesus was living, leaving the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, these massive stones, what wonderful buildings. And he replied, Do you see these buildings? Not one stone here will be left on top of another. Every one will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will these things happen? What will be the sign that they are about to be fulfilled? Verily I say this to you. Watch out that no one deceives you. Many will come in my name claiming I am he and will deceive many of you. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places, famines, pandemics. These are the beginning of the birth pains. This is the word of the Lord in the house of the Lord. We got it all in this book, haven't we? I mean, this should have been rated R at best. I mean, we got the story of Hannah and and in great detail and some of the you got to read behind between the lines a little bit and if you're a, if you're a reader you won't have any trouble with that but one of the things that happens so often when we're reading the bible is that that's where we get left is reading between the lines hannah needed a son because she had nosy neighbors who were giving her a bad time I could ask for a show of hands, who got noisy, nosy neighbors that give you a bad name? She had great faith in God, but she went to the, to the temple to pray, and she prayed the same prayer that you and I pray so often, when she said, God, if you will give me a son. I will give him back to you. I will dedicate him to you the rest of his life. We'll never cut his hair. We'll never shave his head. How many times, how many times have we we've been in that same position? Oh God, if you let this happen, I will do that. None of us pray. When you do this, God, I'll do that. We don't even pray, I'll do that, and then you do what you're going to do. No, no, we're, we're all of the faith of, he, of Hannah. If you only bless me, Lord, I'll do my best to bless you back. You know, if, if we pray that often enough, maybe he'll listen to us. Look what he did for Hannah. Gave her what she asked for. Oh, we, we try to make deals with God all the time. Boy, if we could just, if there was just one more chance, if we had just one, one more place where we could draw closer to him. Now, I'm not a predestiner. I don't believe that everything that happened is exactly planned by God. I think there's a plan from here to there, and God's going to make us get there. Some of us will get there kicking and screaming and dragging our feet as much as we can. And others of us will waltz triumphantly in his company. But I, don't, I think we make, he lets us make those decisions which make us have detours. Oh, he'd lay it out. We could, if we walked his way all the time, if we were just really true in everything we did, be no sweat. We would not have all the troubles and travails we do. But troubles and travails come to us from a lot of places. I've been seeing lately on, on, uh, on, on my phone a newsreel from 1956 where it says in the year 2020 there will come a disease out of China that will sweep the world. This was broadcast in 1956. You see, 
That's why we believe totally in, no, I don't believe totally in predestination. I can't go there. Things happen, yes. God has his hands in so many things. Even such small things as, as the fact that I was able to spend some time, great, great, great time with Estes before he was able to go to be where he wanted to be back in the arms of Linda. And how many, how many places, how many times as you look back in your life has, has there been something that happened where at the time it seemed like it, it just random chance, right? No possibility this would be connected with anything. And you look back and God's hand was there the whole time. And we could have made a different decision. We could have done something other than what we did. And God's plan would have gone on. Maybe in that area without us. But he had a plan for us. Hannah was of great faith. She played great often. And God gave her a son so she could shut up her... I mean, well, that's not anything. So she could shut up her nosy neighbors, right? Every once in a while, God lets us have just that one, that one little victory where we can say, aha, gotcha. But most of the time, we're like Hannah. We have sadness in our heart, sadness that we can't control because we aren't the ones making all the decisions. Jesus warned the disciples. He said, someday this temple will be torn down. And it was. An invading army tore it down and threw every stone down so no two were stacked. And it's been centuries being rebuilt. And he said, people will come along claiming, I am he. And don't be fooled. Oh, we've got, we've got men of the cloth who have been willing to circumvent the truth to present a picture that's different than what reality actually is and it's an awful temptation let me tell you it's an awful temptation not to proclaim the absolute truth when we don't know it all I can do is pray the same prayer that Hannah prayed Lord, if you will bless me, I will give you whatever. And I don't know what I have or what I would get or what I could hope for that I could promise to God that would make a difference to him. But to me, to me, if I'm willing, if I'm willing to, to present myself on my knees to a loving God, I don't have to worry about what it is I ask for because he'll let me know I won't have to decide he will decide for me so he asked you to be he asked you to be faithful he asked you to be confident he asked you to be trustworthy in his love he asked you to be with him in all things nothing wrong with praying if it's better when we are confident enough to pray, God, when we do these things together, we will make your kingdom magnificent here on earth. When, but that's a hard thing to presume, a hard thing to be confident of. When will he, they said, when, when will we know all of this thing, these things are gonna happen? And he said, no, you can't know. First of all, you don't want to know. Secondly, I don't know. Thirdly, only the Lord knows. And I'm not sure he's decided yet when the end will come. I'm not sure. I just know that God has a plan. I know that God's plan includes every one of us. God's plan will allow us to make decisions that will affect our relationship with his plan 
it will not change his plan. It will not alter his plan. It will not make his plan invalid, but it will make a difference in how we fit if we walk away from the chance to get on our knees and say, Lord, when will you bless me? As you blessed Hannah with what she needed, as you blessed others with what they've needed. We go back to the desert, to the wilderness, and when the people were hungry, God fed them. And when they got tired of what they were eating, he fed them something different. When, we get, when he gets tired of us, that's when his plan will be put into place. That's, and we have no control. We have no, entry, we have no business being involved in that kind of a decision. Heaven knows if I remember to set the alarm in the morning, that's enough of my decisions. Because I have to show up here on Sunday. I have to. No, I don't. Everything we do, every step we take, every action we have is predicated on what we see as a have to. Not what God says we have to, but what we see. Hannah had a single purpose in mind. She wanted a son because without a son, she was a poor relative. She was banished from polite society. The nosy neighbors picked on her. They were probably the ones who were like the woman whose neighbors moved, new neighbors moved in across the street. And she looked out one day and said to her husband, that woman needs to know, learn how to do laundry. Her laundry is dingy looked out the next week and said, her laundry's no better. Looked out the third week and said, ha, she learned to do laundry. Her whites are white, her colors are bright. And her husband said, I washed the window. <laughs> we need to have our eyes open. We need to believe like Hannah believed. We need to believe that God will provide and venture forth bravely boldly because God will provide we have a a small choir of ladies who lead off to start the early service and today they, the song they sang for us was trust and obey and I want to close with this single thought there is no other thing that we can do but trust and obey. There is no other way. Trust and obey. Amen. I hate to begin a sentence it's not with if or when, but it seems appropriate. When our faith allows us to be confident that God will fulfill those things he has in mind for us, then I can give him my heart. I can find his peace. So go in peace. Amen.